I do believe with aluminum, you have to bend against the grain. It looks like it opened up on you cause you went with the grain. Hi Daniel, thanks for the comment. This will make a good video topic. So Daniel says he believes that you have to bend against the grain. And so you can see this is three inch by quarter flat bar. These come in about 12 foot sticks. And on extruded aluminum like this, this is 6061, the grain goes lengthwise, the whole length of the aluminum. So he's saying that you need to bend against it and not with it. But that really doesn't make sense because it depends on what you're building. If you have to bend with it, then you have to bend with it. So the grain's running this way, and then the bend is against it. And that worked fine, no cracks. You can see a little bit of stress rippling going on. And if you bend this tighter, it will crack. Any aluminum will crack if you bend it too tight. So we'll, do, we'll bend this one with the grain now. So you can see the ripple pattern is a lot different, more pronounced on the one where you bend with the grain. But there's no cracking. It's still fine. Now we'll do some 8th inch 50-52 sheet, which is a little bit softer, it bends easier. And the grain is running this way. So we'll bend one one way, one the other. And normally I use these radius fingers for bending metal that's 8th inch thick instead of the sharp ones, like this one. But for sake of demonstration, we'll use the sharp ones so it's more prone to break or start cracking. With the grain. Try to get it as close to 90 degrees as I can. Okay, and then against the grain. I was working behind a camera, so it's hard to see. I've been, been them both past 90 a little bit, but I tried to get them as close as possible to the same angle. So this one's against the grain. Grain's running this way. And you can see that it started cracking. You can see those fractures. And then bending with the grain, it also started cracking. So this, I have a sheet metal shear, and I shear this sheet off. So when you shear the sheet, can you see this top right corner, how it's not a perfect 90 degree angle? So, it's like this, a little bit exaggerated. But this is steeper than 90, so it's thinner up here. And that's what's going on on this corner. So if you zoom way in, that thin material gets stretched and actually starts cracking. Let me see if I can get you zoomed in here. You see those crack marks right on the edge? And then versus over here, this being an obtuse angle, it's not as sharp, so it's less likely to crack. See that? So if you're getting really nitpicky, you would want to sand your parts and maybe even polish the corners over on each side. But if you get splits like this, like I used to make a lot of sheet metal valve covers for LS motors, Chevy motors, and you would have these spots, but all you really need to do is just make sure you start your weld back and burn that, fuse it back together, and then start wrapping around from there. And then the width of grain, let's look at that one. So we got, it's going that way. So yeah, just as, suspect, just as expected, that side was thinner on the top, so it cracked. And then the other side probably didn't as bad. Let's see. 
Yeah, a little bit better. There's still a decent crack in it though. So yeah, the main thing is just don't bend them so dang tight and they won't split on you. Give it a little bit bigger of a radius so it can stretch around smooth and not crack. See how nice that is? No problems there. So if you're making a part I really wouldn't worry about with or against the grain, that really doesn't matter. What really matters is just not bending too tight of a radius. Then you can put paper towels under if you don't scratch your parts. Just give it a little bit bigger of a radius so your parts don't get stretched so tight. See that? It's just, it's got stretch marks, but not really cracks developing. I had a lot of sheet metal pros in one of my previous videos tell me that I don't need to be using the radius dies that I like using. All you gotta do is just bend you a sacrificial piece. Like that. And then to get your bigger radius, you just leave it in there and bend your actual part under it like this. Which works. See how that gives you that wider radius? But I don't like doing that because you have to set up your brake. So these brakes have cams back here. So you can adjust your fingers back and forth exactly where you need them, space for what you're bending. And I have it set up really simple so I can bend thinner stuff here. And then down there on the radius die that I like using, I can I don't have to adjust anything, and then I can just bend bigger radiuses with that. So for me, this works great, but what they're saying does work good too. And then when somebody ever makes a comment that says you have to do this or have to do that or always or never, they're almost always wrong because there's exceptions to every rule. So for example, let's say you're wanting to make a little drain pan out of one piece of aluminum. This flex torch head that the Prime Weld comes with is pretty handy for stuff like this. Then when you're doing welds like this, you can just drag the cup back to help stabilize it if you want. So with a part like this, you have no choice but to bend against the grain on two sides and with the grain on the other two. Like I said, it doesn't really matter what you do, just make sure the radius isn't too tight. This video is running a bit long, but let me know if you like this type of content where I show you more tips and tricks on how I fabricate stuff. So on parts like this, I like to run them long if you're making them as aesthetic as possible because the weld stops, it's hard to make them look good, as good as the rest of the weld. So you can make them long and then just trim them to length afterwards. Mark this out with a Sharpie. And I'm sure a lot of you guys wonder why I do things the way I do, but I like to show different techniques. Like here I'm using a porta band instead of my vertical bandsaw because not everybody has a nice vertical bandsaw. Come in on one edge, real careful. 
get that one started. And then slowly walk down to your other edge over here. This saw blade's about toast, it's bucking around pretty good. These thin bandsaw blades flex a lot, so if you were to try to cut down through the whole part without rotating it like this, there's no way you could get it straight. So just do one side at a time, be patient with it. And I didn't really care about it in this video because it's just a demonstration, but if you don't want to scratch your parts up, you can put painter's tape on them so like the porta band fence doesn't hit and scratch it all up and then just peel it off after. This stuff doesn't really leave much residue, if any, after you pull it off. See how much cleaner those tops look if you trim the weld stop off? A lot more professional looking. Even though this is just scrap material, it's all scratched up anyways, but. Okay, thanks for watching. If you guys have any more comments about stuff you think I'm doing wrong or maybe needs clarification, let me know and I can make a video on it.